Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a mid-year tour of my entire eyeshadow palette collection. I'm gonna be zooming in on every palette in my collection, so if you wanna see what I've got going on, then just stick around. If you're new here, my name is Rachel, and I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I really enjoy playing with colorful eyeshadow. Almost all of my palettes are quite colorful, so you might see some of your favorites here too. I try to upload several videos every week that are all eyeshadow related, so I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy what you see. Let's get into this one. Before I forget, today's eyeshadow look was not filmed because I wasn't sure if the children would give me enough quiet time to do so. However, it will be featured in one of my upcoming While I Was Out videos talking about eyeshadow looks that I've done off camera, but telling you all about them anyway. I also want to put in the caveat, I do have a Poshmark and Mercari account. If you're interested, that information is listed below in the description box. There are some palettes that are for sale, so any palettes that I have actively listed for sale, I have not included in today's video because as far as I'm concerned, in my mind, they're no longer part of my collection. I have officially parted with them mentally. So those palettes are not part of today's video. I'm just including palettes that I have active in my collection, things that I am ready to reach for at any given time. Okay guys, so let's get started. In this video, I'm just kind of going based on how the palettes are stacked on my bookshelf. So you'll probably see some brands clumped together. That is my preference, but if they're wildly different in sizes, then they might be separated a little bit. But let's start. Here is the Nomad Verona Amore e Morte palette, or Love and Death. This, I think, was the Valentine's release for 2022, or 23, rather. <laughs> it's quite pretty. When this palette first came out, I had some thoughts that the color story was pretty, but this side is lacking a bit of interest, and also the way that it opens and closes while I think it is really awesome. <laughs> it's also perhaps a bit impractical if you're trying to apply your eyeshadow like this and maybe the second door flops open. However, they are attached with magnets so that's not nearly as much of a problem as I thought it would be. The color store is really lovely. Most of the shimmers in this palette are not people's favorites from Nomad. A couple of them are definitely more topper shades. They're kind of hard to pick up on the brush but once they're on the eye they are really pretty. Here is the Nomad Paradise Islands palette. A fellow YouTuber gave this to me and I recently used it in a video where I was trying to recreate a look from Aniela Kanikvist where she used the new Cosmic Brushes Delicious Delights palette. I think that palette's really beautiful, but because I don't own it, I thought maybe I can dupe the vibes using this palette. I'll link that above for you if you're curious to see it. I think the Cosmic Brushes is probably more exciting, especially when it comes to the shimmers and I prefer some of the more minty tones that it has, but this is a really pretty palette and it's fun to play with. Um, this one is probably summer of last year when it was launched. It's nice, I like it. Here is my very favorite palette from Nomad. This is the Monteverde Cloud Forest palette. Absolutely so much fun. I just love that this is very green heavy because green is my favorite, but then it has these pops of neon. It's so interesting. It's inspiring. I love the colors. The performance is amazing. Almost all of these shimmers are easier to pick up than the Verona palette. I think this one right here is more of a topper shade, but the rest act more like, like uh, the metallic shimmers that I personally prefer. Beautiful colors, beautiful pigmentation and performance. It builds, it blends. The colors are interesting. I get so many ideas when I use this palette. And actually the first time I used it on camera, I ended up going about as neutral as I possibly could with this brown and this green, brown, pink multi-chrome. This is a really, really nice palette and I, I just love it. <laughs> Oh, let's get into Sydney Grace. So this is the Quintessence palette when they collaborated with Temtalia. So another fellow YouTuber gave this to me as well. I think this one's really pretty. I really enjoy the cool toned neutrals of it. And then we have these lovely pops of color. This was my first palette from Sydney Grace and I have been very impressed with the quality so much so that I bought another from the brand. The Sydney Grace quality is stellar. It is so beautiful. I'm very much enjoying the shadows from this brand. Here's the Plain Jane palette from Adept. This was also given to me by a subscriber and this is all sparkle shades. It is duo or multi-chromes, the whole thing. I like the Adept shimmers because they're not too thick or emollient or um, goopy. They're really, really lightweight, very sparkly, kind of like Uden's Eye. Definitely a different formula, but sparkly and shimmery without the weight and the texture that some of the other brands have. Here is the other palette that I recently got from Sydney Grace. This is the Tropicolor palette when they collaborated, collaborated with Tina from the Fancy Face. This is, I believe, the most colorful palette Sydney Grace has ever released. Now, Sydney Grace, like I said, excellent quality shadows. They are known for having more neutral palettes, but they do obviously have a lot of colorful shadows and they have beautiful colors. So I was excited to have this one because I got this used as I do most of my palettes. I have really enjoyed the looks I've come up with and I love the colors. I do like that there are some neutrals to work with, but they're not very, they're not very boring. Really lovely palette and the quality is fantastic and it pairs nicely with the quintessence palette that I have as well. So here is orange sorbet from the BH Sweet Shop series. 
This is the only one that I have left from the sweet shop. I, but I love this orange palette. Orange is such a fun color to play with. You have a nice assortment of mattes that are all still orangey. The shimmers are so lovely. It's very good quality. It's just a really fun, you get what you expect kind of palette. It's nice to grab and pair with other things. Here is my very favorite neutral palettes. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau palette. I think that this palette is great. It's very good quality. This palette is quite unexpected because not only is this bright purple such a fun pop of color, which absolutely works with every other shadow in here, but the colors of the shimmers are not quite what I expected them to be. I initially looked at this palette and I thought that they'd all be sort of dusty and more neutral, subdued sorts of tones, and they are not actually this one is a beautiful rosy tone this one has a lot more green this one is more blue silver it's just when you get them on the eyes they look more pigmented and are a higher more refined shine and payoff it's lovely and i think that what really drew me in was this wisteria shade it kind of glows there's just something about this tone and the undertones combined with the other colors in this palette it's a winner i really really like this one here is the Jaclyn Hills Strawberry Feels palette. I am a little bit surprised I still have this because it's not very exciting and certainly lower on the scale of how well it performs compared to other things. But I like the color story. It's very harvesty, but not too orange and not too pink and not too red. It's sort of found a happy medium balancing point and I enjoy that. I like having the matte white. It's not the best matte white in my collection, but it's not terrible either. And it's pretty. I just think it's kind of fun and pretty. And this is the sort of palette, if I'm feeling like doing a really light, don't have to think too hard sort of eyeshadow look. Granted, I don't mind thinking about my eyeshadow looks, but if it's more like I've got 10 minutes, what can I just throw on and get these more berry sorts of tones, then this is the palette that I wanna go for. Here is the Star Wars palette from ColourPop. This was the first time that they collaborated with the brand. Oh, before I forget, I do have the Child palette. It's not gonna make an appearance in this video because I forgot to pull it out, but I do also own the Child. Anyway, this is the Star Wars palette. I'm considering decluttering this one because I find, and I'll show you very briefly, that it, is quite similar to the Quintessence palette. But they both have these cool tone neutrals. They both have the pops of, of silver and blue. I just don't think I need to own both. They're both really good quality. Um, I think that the Quintessence palette is slightly better quality. This is really good as well, but this one's probably gonna be easier for me to sell because it was a collector's piece and it's, it's just great. I mean, I, I don't have any complaints. It's just, I don't think I need both because they're kind of redundant. Here is the ColourPop Holidays, Holidays, Holidays palette when they collaborated with the Muppets. I think this palette is really fun. I don't reach for it very often, but it, it makes me smile with all these happy, bright, neon-y colors. And yet it has a hint of more metallic, you know, this bronze and the copper tones over here and this bright green. This reminds me of that green in the new Udenzai Stone and Rock palette. Udenzai is far, far better as far as quality and performance. And the green in that palette, I think, is a duochrome at least. This is the pearlescent glitter from ColourPop, which I don't really care for, but I don't hate. This palette's not amazing, but it's just fun, and it makes me smile. Here's the Limoncello palette. I think that the packaging on this one is fantastic, and it's a beautiful warm-toned neutral palette. It has a couple of mid-toned shades, a couple deep shades. I wish it had one or two much lighter mattes, um, because these are kind of mid-toned, but if you just use a little bit less product, you're going to get a lighter result. has the fun pops of color. Beautiful light yellow shimmer, beautiful green shimmer, and then this one over here is sort of a soft pinky rose kind of shimmer. These two shimmers are different as well, but as you can see, they work with the other tones in the palette. It's just lovely. This is my favorite packaging from ColourPop, along with the At For A Sight palette, which segues me right into the At For A Sight palette from ColourPop. When they collaborated with Raw Beauty Christie, best packaging they have ever come out with. Everyone agrees with me, I think. <laughs> and the color story is beautiful. It's soft, it's neutralish, with some color, it's grounded, it's very, very pretty. Very pretty. I've thought about decluttering this one because I don't use it as much as I expected I would. Granted, my collection now is much bigger than it ever has been before. Um, but this is such a beautiful palette. I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I could just leave it as display. It's so beautiful. Here's the Through My Eyes palette from ColourPop. They collaborated with I Love Sarai, and this is a lovely palette as well. It's a little bit more interesting with the teal and bronze and pinky sorts of shades. I think it's fun. Um, this is a nice champagne-y kind of shimmer. I've decluttered most of my ColourPop palettes, but this is a nice palette. I think it's I think it's rather an unexpected color story. The, the way that she paired these rosy and teal and bronze kinds of colors. It's got lightness, obviously, and it's got depth, and it's got a lot of mid-tones. You could go more berry, more orange, more neutral. It really does have a lot of color options, and it's pretty. This is a little MAC quad. This was a custom gift from my sister. Tell me how lovely that is. Isn't that so nice? She did such a good job choosing colors that work together. 
This is a beautiful berry pinky matte. It has a lot of pink in it, but it's dark enough to work as just an outer corner. And then these three shimmers here, this one you can lean more harvest or more pink or a little bit grungier. This is one of the duochromes that Mac, Mac puts out. It's sort of a blue burgundy uh, brown sort of color. It's pretty. And this palette was such a sweet and thoughtful gift. I had recently spoken to my sister about feeling underappreciated and so she did that for my birthday and it made me smile. Here's the ColourPop Orchid You Not. This is one of the few nine pans that I have left from the brand. Excellent quality. This is lovely because it does go dark to light. I do wish it had one more light matte because all of these mattes are either quite deep or mid-tone, but it kind of compensates by having a couple of lighter shimmers. It's just a nice palette. This is easy to reach for when you're wanting this kind of color. Here's the Mint to Be from ColourPop. This one has broken. Two of my shadows broke on me. This is one of my favorite monochromatic palettes, honestly, because these colors look great on me. I really enjoy working with mints. This is a very, very good mint palette. I've heard that the Juvia's Place, the mints, is also excellent. When I want a mint, this is what I'm reaching for because it's just lovely. It's truly really nice. And I think the final ColourPop palette in my collection is Tinkerbell Sprinkle a Little Magic. This is also excellent packaging. They really do a great job with their collaboration packaging. Really, really nice. I know the price is a little bit higher, but it's worth it if you appreciate the packaging. It's sturdy, it's quality. The pans are a little bit bigger. They have usually have details in the mirror here. Again, I had two of these shadows bust on me. I think the ColourPop sh Super Shocks just hate me. The shimmers are pretty. This is such a fun shimmer. This was my favorite in the palette, which is a bit vexing, but <laughs> it is really pretty. And I was talking with one of my subscribers recently I think it was Christy and she was saying how she wanted to get her hands on this palette and I said well I'm not really using mine I'll happily send it to you if you want it but two of the shades are broken and I used it after that I forget I think I filmed it anyway I did use it after that conversation okay, here is the Queen Bee palette from Colored Rain. This is such a beautiful palette. It's small but mighty. Absolutely fantastic in their packaging and the details that they put in and the color story and most especially well the formula across the board actually the mattes are insanely pigmented and beautiful they're so easy to work with they're very very buildable and very blendable and these shimmers are fantastic this is a duo chrome i think it's a gold green sort of shift this one's just a beautiful light berry champagne kind of shimmer oh they're such beautiful colors and despite the fact that this palette only has six shadows in it it is it's just great it's just great Okay, BH Cosmetics again. Here is the Lost in Los Angeles palette. I had actually set this aside to give to one of my friends, and then she ended up buying a new one for herself. So this one is back in my collection. I don't love this palette, but I do really appreciate the quality of the mattes, and I love having a fantastic matte white. Much better than the one in the Strawberry Fields from Jaclyn Cosmetics. I very rarely use this palette. When I do, it's for the white. So I'll probably declutter it simply because it's taking up space. Um, but for now, I have it. Also from BH Cosmetics is the Mimosa palette. This was from their brunch series. This is another excellent palette as far as the performance, just the quality of the shadows and a fantastic matte white. This is really offering some nice things. I don't use this one very often either because I don't dip into pinks and these are really true pinks. Not like some of my other palettes that might be pinkish red, pinkish berry, pinkish orange. No, these are pink. And that's like my, my least used eyeshadow color probably, but it is really good. I especially like the shimmers in here. They're so pretty. Pretty. Again, if I want these sorts of tones, I know where to get them in fabulous quality. And here, I think, is my last BH Cosmetics palette. This is the Blueberry Muffin. This is a lovely, cool toned blue silver leaning palette. It has a couple of really beautiful deepening shades that basically blend themselves. Really, really nice blues. And then lots of silver sorts of shimmers with different undertones. They're all similar, but they're different enough. And it is, it is really, really good quality. Again, this was when BH Cosmetics had figured things out. Here is the Norns palette from Udenzai. Udenzai is my favorite brand, and this is the first palette that I got from them. I think this color story is beautiful. I had listed this one for sale, and then I thought, well, why don't I just use it again? And I did a week of looks using just this palette, and I fell back in love with it because it is truly beautiful. I avoid this shade, this shade, and this shade, but aside from that, everything works like a dream. This is an amazing blending out shade. I thought it was kind of a waste of space until I used it, and it works to blend out every one of the mattes in the palette. The shimmers are beautiful. This whole bottom row is duo or multichromes. This one here, Pink Chameleon, you can see, I hope, is a pinky white iridescent. Oh my goodness, beautiful palette. Really, really pretty. 
Here is the Merry Christmas palette from Oud & Zio, part of their 2022 Christmas releases. I only bought the one, although I wish I had both. <laughs> this palette is fantastic. <laughs> I know, everyone knows. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I, I just can't not rave about it. It's amazing. The quality is top-notch. The shimmers are beautiful. The color story is so unique and different. I mean, who would have thought to put these two colors together? They're just weird together, right? But then you use them and they're amazing. The shimmers are all varied and different. This is the multi-chrome. It's the pink gold green shift. It is beautiful. I love this palette. It is so inspiring. I hope to one day get my hands on the Christmas Eve, if possible, but I'm not gonna sell a kidney for it. And here is the Hello palette from Oudin's Eye. This was when they collaborated with Aniela Kanikvist. I think this palette's lovely as well. This has fallen down to be a little bit low in my ranking since some of their newer releases because these three right here just don't look good on my skin tone, but that's okay. They do work on Angie and she's the one who made the thing. <laughs> the rest of the palette is beautiful. I love these pinky tones and combining these over here, very bright and yet deep at the same time. You can go more swampy colors or you can go really vibrant and rosy and pink. It's lovely. There's a great inner corner highlight highlight here, a couple of light tones, a lot of mid-tones, and then one very deep shade that works to deepen out anything else. It's just beautiful. It's a really nice palette. We have the Saga of Freya Cat's Breath palette. I think this is the best one out of their Saga of Freya collection. This one really caught my attention with the color story. If I can open it. Here we go. I love this blue orange color story and I've said before that I think that this execution of the blue orange color story is better than the frosted flakes from glam light and the in the springs from ColourPop because both of those I feel are a bit redundant there's just a lot of orange and a lot of blue whereas this palette is a smaller version and the undertones are more interesting you've got your orange you've got your blue but this one is more teal this one's more tiffany the orange this one's more brownie this is more vibrant bright sunshine sort of orange and then the shimmers are all different and unique and you have this brown hair to deepen things out or to warm them up or to ground them and to be a bit of a more natural neutral leaning look it's a beautiful palette and i, I really enjoyed the performance of these formulas as well this is the Hummingbird palette from Oud Zai when they collaborated with Tina from The Fancy Face. So I now have, funnily enough, both of Tina's collaborations because she collaborated with Sydney Grace for that Tropicolor. This palette's beautiful as well. These deep shades are so amazing. And then this blue is a different undertone than the other blue in Cat's Breath. This is more of a sky blue. So lovely. I do wish that this palette had one other mid-tone shadow that would work with these right here because you can use this blue for this deep blue and this deep purple but there's not really a mid-tone sh shadow to work with this deep burgundy and then this more hot pinky red sort of shade no come to think of it that looks like the shadow in planet spirit hmm i might have to compare those simply out of curiosity this is a beautiful palette i enjoy having it in my collection it doesn't get as much use as it used to and i'm considering selling it because again it was limited edition so it's pretty well sought after i'm not sure We'll see. But for right now, it is lovely. And you know what was interesting? I watched Tina's video when she made the Tropicolor palette, and she specifically said that the colors she chose for Tropicolor are designed to complement these tones. So her two collab palettes can work together. You don't have any repeat or duplicate shades, which I thought was pretty good foresight on her side of things. Okay, this is the Glamlight Dirty Martini palette. This is my favorite green palette. This is everything. It's not every green that I could ever want, but when I want green palettes, I have this one and I have another one that will come up later. And this is the one that I naturally gravitate towards because I just love the size of it. The other one's much bigger and I love the different tones. You do have some true greens, but then you have some more brown tones. You have a couple blues and you have all these lovely metallic shimmers. It's, it's really beautiful. This is the only one I bought from their um, happy hour collection. I, I don't know. I love this palette though. It's really good. Here is the Still Pretty palette from September Rose Cosmetics. This is my current pink and red palette. I might end up just using the Verona Love and Death palette from Nomad to replace it because that one also pink and red, but it has other tones too with the dark side of things. This one also has other tones over here with the lovely berries. I'm not really sure, but this is good quality. I do like the variety that it offers. It has a nice pretty white shimmer, has a couple of light mattes, a lot of mid-tone mattes, and then a couple of deep, deep mattes here as well. So it's a nicely rounded palette and I, I don't dislike it at all. I'm just not sure if I'm going to keep it. I haven't decided yet. Ooh, here's the Geodes palette from What's Up Beauty. I was very pleasantly impressed by this palette. This is beautiful. The mattes work quite nicely. Most of them are more rosy, which is good for me. And then there are a lot of shimmers, and the shimmers are very well pigmented. They perform really beautifully. They give nice color payoff. It's just a really pretty palette. I'm very, very happy with this purchase. 
I'm waiting to see if my baby's waking up, but let's move on for now. This is the Age of Opulence palette from Beauty Bay. It's funny because I owned this palette. I bought it when it launched, I think, and then I ended up decluttering it, and that was over a year, maybe a year and a half ago, and I wasn't as comfortable or familiar with the Beauty Bay formula, so I was frustrated because the palette was so deep, and at that time I wasn't comfortable bringing in other palettes and other formulas to, you know, to bring in some lighter tones, but then a subscriber sent this to me as a gift, and so now I have it back in my collection, and it's been fun. Now I have a better handle on how to use the formula and what I want my eyeshadow looks to be like. So I'm having fun playing with this palette. It is lovely. This is, to me, Christmas Eve in a palette. I mean, could you get more rich and saturated and glamorous than this palette? I ask you. This is the much sought after Wilderness palette from Beauty Bay. I love this one. This is one of my favorite palettes ever. It is definitely my favorite from the brand. It is such an interesting palette. It's the most grounded and yet colorful and interesting color story. I love, you know, you've got the sky tones and then more earthy and neutral and then more grounded tones, yet we have some red, we have some blue, we have some beautiful shimmers. It's just really, really fun to play with. This is the sort of color story that keeps me going. You know, I just, I get so many ideas when I look at it and there are several palettes in my collection at this point where I can say, I literally fall asleep thinking, ooh, what could I combine next? And this is one of those palettes. Here's my final palette from Beauty Bay. This is the Dark Fantasy. I may end up passing this one along as well because I just don't find it as exciting as I thought I would. It is very nice though. It's the same great formula. I think the color story is interesting. I like these, you know, this bright green and then the grungy brown and then a minty green. It's kind of cool. I just don't find that I use it nearly as much as I thought I would. So I'm probably going to pass this one along pretty soon as well. Here is the Serenity palette from Cosmic Brushes. At the time of this filming, they just launched their Delicious Delights palette, which is beautiful pastels. I had talked myself out of it, and then I talked myself back into it, so I don't know. We'll see. I did buy the Muse palette. It is on pre-order. It hasn't even shipped yet, I believe. At the time of this filming, it's not even in stock yet, but I'm super excited because Muse is coming my way. I've been wanting that one for a while. So anyway, here's the Serenity palette, the one that broke the internet. Ah, and I'm dropping it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> This color story is just so lovely. I understand why it was so popular as far as the color story. I mean, who doesn't love blue and purple together? Come on, I ask you. And then these fun pops of green, amazing. And this, just like I said with Wilderness, is one of those palettes that just gives me so many ideas. I, I can look at three or four shadows and be like, oh, that would be a perfect look. I have the exact same reaction to the Merry Christmas palette from Uden's Eye. So many ideas. Fabulous quality, wonderful performance. This is absolutely up there as far as just a great brand. It's extremely affordable, especially if you're in the UK because Cosmic Brushes is a UK-based indie brand, but in my opinion, it is worth it. If you're going to treat yourself, this is an affordable and high-quality palette. Last pile. These are from Uden's Eye. This is the Planet Spirit palette. This is when they collaborated with Betty Jean, and here is this color story. This is the one that I wanted to compare to. Which was it? Okay, so in Planet Spirit, it's definitely more of a rosy red pink, and in Hummingbird, it's more of a fluorescent neon sort of red. They're close, but they're definitely not the same. I think that of the trio when this was launched, this is the least cohesive, actually the most difficult to work with as far as just using these colors to create a look because there aren't any really deep shades and there aren't any really light shades as far as matte, so it's hard to create your base look before adding shimmer, but that is totally dependent on your personal eyeshadow aesthetic. You might be the type of person who just wants to cover your lid in one shimmer or to do matching looks, you know, put this all over the lid and then put this on top of it. So it depends on what your goals are when you're doing your eyeshadow. This shadow did break on me. It's currently ground into my carpet, so that was fun. But I think the colors are really beautiful, and I did buy this with full ex expectation of combining it with other palettes to create more cohesive looks. Here is the Sea Talk palette. This was my favorite. This is now my second favorite Uden's Eye palette, period. I love this palette. I think it is so so beautiful. It's unique and interesting. It's another one where I just get so many different ideas, despite the fact that this is just 10 shadows. But all the shadows work beautifully. They're good on my skin tone. You've got cool neutrals, warm neutrals, and then a bunch of other things. It's so beautiful. The looks I get from this are always fun, always interesting, always extremely sparkly. I love this palette. It's fabulous. I didn't mention this palette is when they collaborated with Lauren May Beauty. Here is the Flora Story palette where they collaborated with Makeup Just for Fun. And I think that this color story, while it is the most expected and safe, it is to my taste the least exciting. Most of these mattes look pretty dusty on my skin tone, and that's nothing to do with Amanda or Uden's eye. It's simply the undertones of the mattes. The shimmers are really pretty, and I like that there's this amazing purple deepening shade, but this palette doesn't inspire me. In hindsight, I shouldn't have bought it. I will probably end up passing it along at some point, 
because I'm not reaching for it as much as I should or as much as I wanted to, it is a beautiful collaboration. And I think that these colors are probably great on so many people. It's just not the best fit for my tastes. Here's the Flare palette from Ace Beauté. I recently re-bought this palette in the new formulation because I had it for so long in the old. I love this color story. This is another one where I get so many ideas. It's just interesting. It's not predictable. And for me, I get tons of ideas when I look at this palette. I might be like, I just want to use this shimmer and what kind of colors can I build around that shimmer? Or, hey, I want to try this shade and this shade together. How can I make that work? And that's how I love to play with eyeshadow. Just pull out random colors and see what I can do to bring them together into something cohesive. This is the sort of palette and the color story which inspires me to do that. And this is the updated formula from Ace Beauté. I did a video where I was comparing the new flare palette to the old flare palette and seeing how the formulas compared. So the new formulation is definitely better. The shimmers are better. The mattes build up better. They're not as patchy. Um, overall, it's an improvement. Here is the Whistler Snow Lodge palette from Nomad Cosmetics. This was given to me as a Christmas gift by one of my kind subscribers. Thank you, Alicia. I think this palette is beautiful. This shade right here is a blue purple duochrome. It's so pretty. And I think the palette overall is just really lovely. You've got mainly cool tones, a couple of warm tones over here. The colors work together beautifully. The formula is very nice. This is one of Nomad's best palettes, I think. Again, we have quite light shades, a couple of mid tones, and then several deepening shades as well. So you wanted to go more blue or more green or more neutral. It's beautiful and it's a lot of fun to play with. Here's the Lore palette from Blend Money Cosmetics. This was my first purchase from the brand and you can bet that I have my eye on them to buy more from them because they have a fantastic matte shimmer as well, but especially their matte formula. The quality is amazing. So the Lore palette was the first one that really caught my eye. Before this, they had several rainbow palettes with different undertones. One was more neon or fluorescent, one was more grungy. And then they released two different neutral palettes. But this was the most interesting color story I'd seen to date. And I love these mermaid vibes. I love the teals, the blues, the pinks, the purples. I enjoy the way that Blend Bunny formats their palettes. You know, it's just very pleasing to the eye. It's quite appealing to look at. And the performance, again, is fantastic. Fantastic. Here's the Palettopoly palette from Ace Beauté. I think this is such an underrated palette, really. The formulation is their newest version, and it is fantastic. Between mattes and shimmers, everything performs so beautifully. It's just fun to work with. The color story is quite different and unique. You have really bright colors. You have some grungier colors, a lot of light, a lot of depth, everything in between. The shimmers are not too dark that I would not want to work with them. I really prefer mid to light tone shimmers and all of these are that. Overall, it's really good quality. It's beautiful and it's a lot of fun to work with. I will be doing a week of Palettopoly. It's just a matter of filming schedule with my little babies and, you know, she's not always allowing me to film as much as I want to. So it's going to be coming. It just is taking longer than I want. Here's the Michaela Pot 2 palette from Glamlight. Should I do the first one first? Here's the first Michaela palette from Glamlight. I always thought this packaging was kind of tacky, honestly. I get it. It's fun, I suppose, but that doesn't really matter. Here's the original Michaela palette. Um, I think that this is a very fun, very colorful color story, obviously. I don't care for these two rows of neutrals at the top, especially because they're warm toned for the most part. And most of these brights are cool. Actually, all the brights, I think, are cool toned. And it, there's a little bit of disparity when it comes to matching them together. I think this palette is too purple heavy. There are like seven or eight purples in here. I'm like, come on guys, we could have put in a few more blues or a few more yellowy oranges or maybe a red or two, a few more greens. I think it could have been balanced a little bit more away from the purples and into some other shades. But overall, it's fun. I do really enjoy Glam Light's formula and their quality. And so here is the second version, the Michaela Pot 2, which is quite a bit heavier on the greens, but not not really a lot of true greens. This entire row is more tealy, interesting undertone greens. I prefer this one, I think, overall. I haven't used it as much, but I do kind of prefer the color story. It's got some really good deepening shades. It's got a couple of more pastel tones, several mid-tones. These shimmers are a bit more unique as well. Overall, I would say I prefer Pot 2 to the original, but they're both good palettes. Almost done, guys. Here is the Naughty palette from BH Cosmetics. I was quite surprised, honestly. I, I really was genuinely surprised at how much I've enjoyed this palette. It's far bigger than I prefer, as are the Michaela palettes. They're just too big, and I, f I find myself feeling overwhelmed when it comes to using them. But oh my goodness, the quality in this palette is stellar. It is so good. This was like BH Cosmetics tip top best formula. It's amazing. The mattes perform beautifully. They have so much color payoff, so much rich, true color. And then the shimmers, the shimmers are very sparkly, but they're not too 
oily looking or too wet looking. They glide on so smoothly. Amazing. This one and this one are both glitter, which I don't like and I avoid. But aside from that, this palette has really surprised me. The final palette that we're going to talk about today is the 42 pan earthy palette from Beauty Bay. I really liked this earthy palette, but I wasn't going to buy it because I had a couple other green palettes that I loved. But a subscriber had ordered this giant one from Beauty Bay. Remember, the Beauty Bay released this color scheme in a 9 pan, a 16 pan, and a 42 pan. So a subscriber had ordered the 42 pan and she got at least one possibly two extras and the brand was like eh, that's fine just keep them <laughs> so she ended up sending one to me i think the color story is great i mean this is so many greens and green is my favorite color to use but this palette isn't fully monochromatic because it has these two rows of the warm brown and red shades as well it's really really pretty you know what surprises me about this palette is that there are almost no green shimmers has anybody else noticed that i mean look at like this is a green shimmer but besides that there are no green shimmers. Am I the only one? I think I think it's great. The formula is very nice. It's fun to play with. You do get some really pretty looks, of course. A lot of variety. Like, how could you not get pretty looks out of this? But I, I'm just very surprised that there are no green shimmers. Not really. I do like the shimmers. This one's really pretty. This one's kind of cool. It'd probably be neat on a deep, grungy, uh, smoky eye. This one is very nice. I mean, I haven't used this palette a ton because it's so big because I have so many other beautiful palettes as well. And I, you know, space out my attention. But this is nice. It just surprised me a bit. All right, so there you have it, guys. That's my entire eyeshadow palette collection as of the middle of 2023. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Comment below some of your favorites. Do you have these palettes? What do you think of them? I know I made some other comments about palettes that I might be getting or palettes I might be getting rid of. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I appreciate you being with me and for watching my video. Remember to like and subscribe if you like what you see, and I'll see you guys again in my next video very soon.